Hi, I'd like to start off by introducing myself. My name's Dennis Thomas, and this picture was taken at a green bean coffee shop in Baghdad, Iraq, the very last time I worked as an electrical foreman. I was 50 years old at the time, and I was hired to manage 50 multinational electricians on forward operating base D-4 Falcon. The military was experiencing electrocutions of military personnel, and we were tasked with going through every building on our base, correcting all immediate life health safety issues in all 778 buildings, and then going back through the entire base and bringing every building up to the 2008 National Electrical Code using European materials. We worked 12 hours a day, seven days a week. I worked like that for five months straight and then took a 10 day trip home. I did that three times for a total of 15 months. I've personally worked as a foreman in the field for a total of about 25 years. Here's a little more info about me. I'm a licensed master electrician I have over 40 years experience in the electrical trade. I've worked all disciplines, residential, commercial, industrial, maintenance, and solar. I've managed up to 80 direct hire employees at one time. I managed 50 direct hire electricians for 15 months in Iraq. I've invested my entire career in developing methods to profitably manage labor on competitively bid electrical projects. In my most recent position, I managed six construction managers and six safety supervisors on $1.2 billion worth of solar assets for a utility company in Tampa, Florida. That utility company could have hired anyone they wanted to manage their solar construction, O&M, and warranty work, but they chose me. They chose me because of my success in building solar projects for them on time and on budget. If you were to ask me, I would tell you that the electrical foreman is one of the most important roles in the entire electrical contracting business. Now, it's important to remember that it does take an entire team to succeed. But as an electrical foreman, you can have a huge impact on the success of the project. It's pretty widely accepted in the construction industry that labor costs are the most difficult cost to control. And the contractors who figure out how to do that are the most successful. As an electrical foreman, you have direct control over labor. And the way you manage that labor has an absolute effect on the profitability of your projects. That's powerful. It's also a lot of responsibility. And companies should be very careful who they trust with that responsibility. This is a dentist drill, and let me explain that. In the mid-1980s, I was running projects for an electrical contractor that built mostly multi-family stuff, and he liked me because I made him money. One day, I swung by the shop with one of my journeymen to check in with the contractor, and while I was there, I asked the journeyman to grab a whole hog out of the tool crib. When I was done talking with the contractor, I met back up with the journeyman and checked to make sure he had remembered to grab the drill. When I asked about it, he responded by telling me that the only drill left in the tool crib was a dentist drill. Well, I didn't know what a dentist drill was, so I asked him, what's a dentist drill? He responded by saying, you know, that big metal drill. This particular contractor owned a really old three-quarter inch chuck super hole shooter. It was big and heavy, all metal, not a piece of plastic on it anywhere. And if it hung up while you were drilling, it would spin a 200 pound man around like a ballerina. So then I asked him, well, why do you call it the dentist drill? And he told me, that's what everyone calls it because it's a bitch to work with. 
That was a really profound experience for me because I always thought I was a pretty nice guy. And for someone to feel that way about me was alarming. I immediately started running through my mind to try to figure out if it was a fair statement or not, and eventually concluded that he was right. I pushed my guys really hard, and here's why. I never knew how fast I needed to move through a project in order to be profitable. So my strategy was to give it everything I had. My reasoning was that if I pushed like hell all the way through the project and we lost money, the estimate must be bad, right? Once I understood all this, I went to work immediately. I made a commitment to myself that I was going to learn every skill I needed in order to manage crews profitably in a manner that they would appreciate and respect. I'm not exaggerating when I tell you that I read books end on end for probably about 10 years. I studied scheduling techniques, employee management, dealing with difficult people, accounting, project management, motivation, basically anything I could find that I thought would make me the best electrical foreman in the field. But I never really put any of the skills I learned into practice because although I developed a lot of knowledge and skills that would make me a better leader, I still didn't know how fast my crews needed to move in order to be profitable. So I just kept pushing. Then one day I went to work for a very large contractor in Northern California. At the time they had about 400 electricians working for them. I eventually ran projects for them, but I started as a journeyman working under the most notorious asshole foreman in the entire company. And he and I really hit it off. This guy was genius and much more advanced on profitability management than I was. One day he showed me the entire solution to my problem without even knowing it, and all of the pieces slid into place for me. Here's what he showed me, and for those of you who've never seen one, this is an electrical estimate that was compiled from commercial estimating software. Let's take a closer look. This column here gives us a description of the material we're working with. Half inch EMT, three quarter inch EMT, etc. The next column gives us the quantity of each type of material. In the case of pipe, this would be the total footage. The next column tells us the cost of the material per unit. C would be per 100 feet, E would be per each, and M would be per 1,000 feet, like in wire. Next is the extended price of the material. The next column is where the magic begins. This column tells us how many hours we have to install the material. In this case, one half inch EMT needs to be installed at a rate of 100 feet every two and a half hours. This does not include supports and fittings, which would have to be added in to get a true rate of installation. But now you can see that the estimate is where I was able to figure out how quickly my crews needed to install material. The final column tells us the total time allowed in the estimate for each type of material. Now that's powerful. Once I figured this out, it took all the pressure off of me and placed it on the employee to perform. Instead of waving my arms and stamping my feet and telling everyone to hurry up all day, I just handed them a schedule that told them what I wanted them to do and how long they had to complete it, backed up by the statement that if they succeeded, they'd be a superstar. And if they didn't, they'd be costing the company money. Having them record their actual time spent against each of their tasks provided the accountability to motivate them to complete on time. Managing employees became as simple as telling the employee what I wanted them to do, how long they had to complete it, and asking them to log their hours against each task. Now I was able to start implementing the skills I learned about treating employees well and managing them in a professional manner which had the effect of creating even more productivity. From this point on, I tested every technique and concept I had learned. I began throwing out what didn't work 
and started building a system of crew management comprised of all the techniques I learned that did work. But that's enough about me for right now. Let's talk about you for a minute. The way that it generally works in the electrical industry is that by proving your skills as a profitable and knowledgeable journeyman electrician, you eventually earn the opportunity to promote to electrical foreman. When your company eventually comes to you and offers you this opportunity, that is just the beginning for you. You don't just change from one day to the next and automatically inherit the skills you need to be an effective electrical foreman. Just like when you first became a journeyman electrician, you still have a lot to learn. One way you can quickly establish yourself as competent in your new role is by looking the part. So if you were an electrical contractor that was going to invest in an individual and basically give them the responsibility to manage a project or even a portion of a project that could affect their financial future, which of these three workers do you think you might select? Now, obviously I'm being a little over the top here, but the title of electrical foreman is a professional title. It means something, and it gives you literal control over the success of the company you are working for, so it should be taken seriously. If you perform properly at this level, you will be on track to have a successful and profitable career. If you get it wrong, I can assure you that you will not be doing it very long. Nobody keeps electrical foremen that don't make them money. If you chose this guy, I would argue that you're correct. Look, I've already told you that I believe a good electrical foreman is one of the most important members of the construction team. The electrical foreman is where the rubber meets the road. The electrical foreman is the individual who's going to take the electrical estimate and make it a reality. And there's a lot that you need to know in order to do that. Of course, you need a good understanding of how to assemble the materials per plan, but there's a lot more that you also need to know and understand. Just to open your eyes a little, here are some other things you'll need to know and understand. Customer relations. The way you interact with the customer will have huge impacts on the company's success. Managing a crew. The way you manage a crew will play a large role in your success or failure. Labor units. You need to understand labor units and what is included in a labor unit so you can understand how to best focus your efforts. Scheduling. You need to be able to interpret the master schedule and how to translate it into rolling schedules for your crews so you can stay on track and profitable. Budgets. You need to understand your budgets and how to manage them to control your costs and overruns. Safety. You are responsible for the safety of your crew and the other trades that may enter your work area. Morale. Happy workers are productive workers, so you need to maintain your crew's morale in order to maximize the profitability of your projects. Conflict resolution. Construction sites are notorious for frequent conflicts between trades, contractors, and employees, so you need to be able to maintain harmony. Estimating. You need a clear understanding of the estimating process so that you can interpret the estimate data and use it to schedule and monitor your progress. Daily logs. Your daily log is very important because you may need to refer back to it to justify change orders, reference safety issues, or, in some cases, for litigation. Procurement. While most of your material package will be negotiated and bought out for you, you could have control over certain specialty purchases, and you need to manage those costs responsibly. The electrical foreman is one of the most important roles in the electrical construction industry, but you need to take that serious. If you do, it will provide you a lifetime career that pays well and garners a lot of respect. It is also a great platform to launch your career from that can lead to superintendent, estimator, or project manager. 
Let's take a deeper look at what it takes to be successful.